All right, so uh, in order to uh, do this, we're going to just split this uh, case on the, this uh, seam here. As you can see, this seam, we'll just split the case right there. And uh, that allows us to get access to the, uh, to the fan. So uh, let's do that. Oh, and by the way, these, uh, these uh, Black & Decker Workmate things, they are so, so handy. I've probably, I've, you know, it's like I bought cheap ones. Just get the, uh, just get the uh, actual uh, name brand one. Don't, uh, don't cheap out. Just get the name brand because uh, it is definitely worth having one of these things. Um, usually, all right. They're just so uh, useful as a, yeah, as a very, fairly sturdy vice, and uh, you can, uh, you know. Other things I've done, you know, other things I've done with them, uh, maybe I can... um, All right, so we're going to take this and uh, right here, get it right on the seam and... Uh, got this case more or less split we just got to work around the edge try to do this without hurting ourselves too much there we go all right remember if you have pieces fall off like that these are little bits of plastic be sure to pick them up uh, they can be kind of dangerous all right so uh, yeah We've got we've got a really cheap fan here, but you know something? It's completely intact. It's a nice centrifugal fan, so maybe we can use it for something. But got this little nut here, and uh, I can't really tell whether it's a uh, right hand or left hand threaded. Um, but uh, I'll get a screwdriver and uh, or a nut driver and. Uh, see what happens all right so uh yeah went and uh got our screwdriver here but uh i don't need that bit i will put it in my pocket actually i'm gonna sit it down here where i can find it later um and then uh, i'm gonna put the adapter for uh this is a this is a, a 5 16 inch um socket um i'm gonna put that on there so, and then uh, we're going to try to uh, rotate this off. I'm going to hold it with my thumb, and it feels like it wants to tighten up. Now, one thing, you know, one thing I've learned in my life is that if you feel like you're trying to make something turn, um, or you're trying to loosen something mainly, and it isn't loosening, it usually means you should turn in the opposite direction because if you keep going the other way you're actually tightening it and you can snap things and break things and that's a, that can be very bad depending on what it is so I'm going to try the opposite direction and yes so you can see if I rotate it counterclockwise it tightens it tightens up and that's uh, that's tightened up right there if you rotate it clockwise it loosens this is called a reverse threaded uh, nut uh, reverse threaded screw or bolt or whatnot. You find these things on things that turn usually. So I'm going to pull this off. Got the nut right there. We'll keep that because we might might find it useful. And this, oh, all right, got a little uh, lock washer thing here. Um, and this should 
Well, with a little bit of encouragement, it should come off. Hopefully. Hopefully. Come on. All right. Well, maybe. Maybe. Oh, there we go. Yeah. All right. And that's how we do it. And, haha, -ha, it's uh, they're held on by screws. So, uh, fortunately, I threw that down there. Um, one moment. <laughs> All right. Well, um, I went and I got a number two bit, swapped out the uh, other one. I'm not sure what size that one is. I think maybe they call it a number one. I'm not sure. I'm going to take our uh, other uh, socket thing and just put that in our uh, pocket because I probably should have been where I put the bit at anyhow. And uh, we can see, rather interestingly, well, I'll show you whenever I pull this motor out, but notice it's actually a, uh, it's actually a shaft adapter of some sort. Um, so uh, I'll just uh, unscrew the uh, unscrew the uh, screws that are holding it to the housing, and uh, set those right there. They're just a couple of small machine bolts, and uh, they also apparently have a tiny uh, lock washer as well. I think. I'm not sure. So I see. I see a lock. It might, it might be a rib nut, I'm not sure. Uh, we'll have to look here in a second. Um, and uh, there we go. Motor is, uh, is free. And uh, there we are. And let me show you something. The top number on this, I believe, is the, uh, is the, uh, motor, is the motor number, is the uh, model number. But... Here you go, look. See, Johnson, Johnson motor. Usually Johnson will, will stamp their uh, thing on the side like that. They'll, they stamp it on the side of the uh, casing. Um, Mabuchi usually can tell from the end bell. Um, they're usually like plastic or they're stamped on there. It says Mabuchi or it has the Mabuchi symbol. Um, at any rate, um, yeah, this is a very nice motor. Johnson and Mabuchi both excellent motors uh, but this has like I said it has a little shaft adapter um, you can see that there is a uh, there's a little uh, uh, a little hole on the end for I believe a, a small I believe a, a small little screwdriver can go in there and it's got a uh, it's got a grub a grub nut in there or a grub a grub screw a little tiny headless screw to tighten it down there's actually one on both sides to keep it attached to the shaft of the motor. Those can be removed and uh, then you have the motor. Now, we can go onto uh, Johnson's website um, or sometimes we have to look it up, uh, you know, just with some Google Foo and uh, find this number. Just all you have to do is just type in that number, type in Johnson, type in motor, DC motor, things like that. And usually you can find a PDF or at least a catalog or something and be able to find what the specs are for the motor. Now we know that we know that just from the uh, you know from everything that it's either somewhere between 12 and 18 volts. The uh, the casing itself, if you look, um, you can see that it has uh, that it says uh, that it's um, oh how do I want to put it? You can see that it says that it's uh, 12 12 volts at what is it? six and a half amps uh, so likely this motor runs at least over five amps probably stalls at uh, you know who knows 20 30 amps I don't know and uh, you know so you you know if you use an H bridge or some other kind of motor controller you want to uh, size that motor controller for the stall for the stall current uh, ultimately um, otherwise you'll burn the motor controller out if the motor stalls um, you know, or at least it should have some kind of overload protection or something to um, protect it from uh, from any inadvertent stalls of the motor. Um, but yeah, that's uh, what we got here. We've got a very nice motor. Um, yeah. So uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to uh, I'm looking I'm looking at these things. Yeah, these are. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, but uh, you know, there's uh, there's a couple of these um, 
lock uh, lock washers or something in there. I'd, I think they're just lock washers and that they're kind of like got pressed into the plastic and they can probably just be easily removed with a small jeweler screwdriver or something. Just pry them up and pop them out. So um, I'll probably do that. And uh, the other thing we're going to do, and this is something that I always do, no matter what size the things are, especially if I'm uh, repairing something or um, you know taking something apart that I want to put back together, take your screws or your bolts or whatever they are, if you can, and just thread them back into where they go after you've taken the part off or whatnot. You know, in this case, we took off the uh, cover or the case, and now we're just going to just thread the screws back back into place you know as best as we can and uh, you know the reason why you do this you can't do it all the time there's certain cases where you can't um, I found this to be true on um, automobile engines um, where uh, you know the anyhow so yeah little 12 volt motor um, was it uh, was it worth three dollars and fifty cents most likely these motors brand new they can uh, you know I've seen them run anywhere from ten to fifteen dollars brand new um, you know but uh, again we had to uh, do some a uh, little bit of effort there um, so you know but uh, you know you can get the, you can get these kinds of motors these uh, this one is actually if I remember right it's roughly Oh, I can't remember. I want to. I want to say that this this size motor, if you go by the old RC style motor sizing, I believe is a um, what's called a 550, uh, 540 or 550. I'm not sure. We can measure it, um, get an idea better. But um, you know, these are very powerful motors, um, very fast, as you heard from before, and uh, you know, nice DC, nice brushed brush carbon brush motors uh, you know not not anything cheap that last a long time so uh, they can be used for uh, many different kinds of projects and uh, you know you'll find them in all kinds of things uh, but uh, most of them most of the time if you even go on to Johnson's site on their you know on their catalog or whatnot uh, they they mention that uh, these things that uh, what they get used in is mainly things like drills and uh, stuff like that so you'll find you'll find these in a lot of uh, you know in a lot of uh, electric drills and uh, what, what not like that and we'll be taking apart some of those later um, in a different video uh, all right well that pretty much covers it when it comes to tearing down mattress inflators and reusing their components in projects if you guys are doing anything with junk or with robotics or junk botics or you have any questions or ideas for projects please let me know in the comments down below and if you liked what you saw today please consider subscribing Please share this with your friends and let them know what I'm doing here. And hey, I'll even take your likes. Until next time, thank you again for watching this video. And remember, keep calm and keep junking. <laughs>